we go on Thanksgiving 2011. It's foggy outside. We're under the roof at Ford Field. Down to the field. Here's Pam Oliver. Well, the Lions get it. This game is huge. It's a game that matters. Matthew Stafford told me before the game the Lions are jacked up and they are loose. Kyle Vandenbosch told me before the game a win today would really validate the Lions and prove that this organization is on the way up. Game-wise, he said that he feels like the Lions really match up well against the Packers. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you. We look at the division, the NFC North, obviously the only undefeated team is in first place, but Detroit right behind them at 7-3, and three, tied with Chicago. And Chicago lost their trigger man, Jay Cutler, last weekend. They will go with the untested Caleb Haney. We're glad you're with us. Defon Logan is waiting. And let's see just how good this game is. And there's a draft. Garrett Ford Field to knock the ball off the tee. All that build up and, and the ball falls off the tee. Packers won the toss. They deferred. So it will be the Lions on offense. And young Matthew Stafford to take on this struggling Green Bay defense. <laughs> Nothing new for Crosby as he has his 34th touchback of the season. Who is Matthew Stafford protected by? He is protected by this offensive line. Backus never misses a game. Raiola rarely does. And then one of the biggest weapons in the NFL, Troy Calvin Johnson on the outside. Well, and you look at that offensive line, it's a it's a line that has gotten better as the season has gone along. And I know last week Kevin Smith had a huge day for them rushing the football. There were a lot of nice holes created by that offensive line up front. And he gets the start today. And he gets the handoff on the first play from scrimmage. A nice game for Kevin Smith. Former third round pick who was let go and then was re signed with job at best dealing with post concussion syndrome. It's a 3 4 defense. It's a secondary Troy that's without their top safety, Nick Collins, and it's a secondary that's given up a lot of yards and come away with a lot of picks. On second down, Stafford. Over the middle, pass is caught. That's Smith. And he's out to the 39 with a Detroit first down. You see Kevin Smith in the backfield. He's going to work his way over there on a check down. Initially, Matthew Stafford wants to go down the field, but he comes down to Kevin Smith late. Late's able, or uh, Smith's able to make a guy miss and pick up the first down. Nice job of being patient in the pocket by Matthew Stafford. Waiting. 55. On first down, here he is again. Pepper in on the stop with Bishop became a three. And Kevin Smith checks out and says, I need a break. So coming into the game is Maurice Morris on second and seven. That is the story with the comeback last week. One of three times that the Lions have come back from 17 or more this season to win a game. First time that's ever happened. What? In the NFL. Five touchdowns, two early picks. And Stafford with that fractured index finger, a glove on his throwing hand, got hot. Blitz coming. Lions pick it up and all day down the middle too high for Titus Young. And nearly picked off by Tremont Williams. It's third down. Well, the Lions are trying to run deep crossing routes, and to do that, then that offensive line's got to do a good job of protecting for Matthew Stafford. You're going to see him come through here, these receivers. But they didn't get across the field quite the way Matthew Stafford thought that they might. And that ball obviously thrown behind. And you don't see that very many times with Jermon Williams. It's third right. down and seven. Here come the Packers on a blitz. Stafford completes to Scheffler. For a first down and a big catch with Williams all over him, a gain of eight. It's a nice way to start the game with their first third down and to be able to convert it because the Lions this year have not been very good on that down. 
It's a nice job there of, of Scheffler being able to, to bring it in. Typically that's a ball you'd like to be able to put on the body of the receiver to protect him a little bit. He had to extend to catch 30. it and secure the catch without having it knocked out. As you mentioned Detroit's just 30 percent on third down this season. Here's Smith. Penalty flag flies. Looks like a hold and we'll get the call. Holding. Offense number 13. Ten yard penalty. First down. They get Nate Burleson and that erases a 15 yard run by Smith. Yeah good call too because Nate Burleson as you see there in the slot position he comes in on Charles Woodson Woodson trying to get away from him. He's got his right hand there on the back and keeps him from coming off of that block and being able to make a play. Well, that's a big hole that backs the Lions back on their side of the 50 where they have a first down at their own 46 but a first and 15. Green Bay ranked defensively 30th in the NFL. They just get it away. Pass is caught by Pettigrew. And now the ball comes out and they're going to say an incomplete pass. Woodson was there defending as he usually is right in the middle of all the action for the Green Bay Packers. Now there's no doubt that Dom Capers wants to see Charles Woodson around the line of scrimmage. We talked about it last week in that win against Tampa. Good things happen when Charles Woodson is around the ball. And when he's coming on the blitzes as we saw two weeks ago against the Minnesota Vikings boy that that resembled a lot of the same things that we saw last year during that six game run right on through to the Super Bowl. Morris, Morris, Morris up at the top of the screen on second and 15. <laughs> Four man rush wide open was Calvin Johnson and the pass nowhere near him. And maybe it's time to talk about that broken index finger on the right hand of Matthew Stafford now wearing a glove. Well Matthew Stafford as soon as he threw that ball he grabbed his his headgear knowing that he had made a big mistake. Joe I know going back to, even to the Chicago game certainly last week early in the game with the interceptions. I didn't think the interceptions had so much to do with Aaron throws as much as it was just poor decision making. But we've seen two throws now that have been no nowhere near the vicinity of his target. Now third down and 15 a handoff and it's bobbled. Somehow it gets back into the arms of the running back Burleson who got the carry. A gain of four and it's fourth down and 11. So Burleson who has carried the ball now eight times on the season. Got this delayed handoff and immediately put it on the ground. The Lions got a good bounce. You always worry when you're handing off to a wide receiver who's not accustomed to taking handoffs as a running back is. It looked like Matthew Stafford just slid the ball all the way through the pocket, but the Lions are just happy to be able to punt the ball right here. Second week in a row for Ben Graham filling in for the injured Ryan Donahue out with a back quad. out of bounds not a good effort by Ben Graham. Corliss almost got a hand on it to block it just a 29 yard punt. Aaron Rodgers will start at the 22 when we come back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. This crowd is ready on a Thanksgiving. The undefeated Packers. Start at the 22. They fake the handoff to Starks and the pass caught by Nelson. And this combination has been getting better and better and better. Rodgers to Nelson. We look at this offense for the team that's won 16 straight. And up front they are still without Chad Clifton out with a bad hamstring since week five. Backs and receivers they spread it around better than anybody in the NFL. Wide open is Finley and Jermichael has 13 and a first down. Tullock on the stop 
and we'll look at the numbers for Rodgers which are on a pace to be record setting almost across the board. I like what Green Bay is doing to start this game. They're immediately going to a no huddle with an up tempo. Now here's Starks. And James Starks is down inside the 45 to the 43, a gain of eight. When you talk about Aaron Rodgers and what he's been able to do this season, and I'm kind of interested in how he's going to respond coming off his worst game of the season right. <laughs> on Sunday. He was frustrated. He didn't throw the ball well. He threw for 299. Had one pick, three touchdowns, and he was upset. It's second down. They fake it to Starks. Rolling out, it's Finley, and he's brought down immediately by Delmas. A gain of just one. And now they're saying incomplete as he dropped it on the sideline, and that's a surprise to Finley, so it's third down and short. You look at this defense, and they're good up front. And Dominican Sue. The linebackers are better than a year ago. Yeah, this entire defense is better than a year ago, but those, those front four guys, they're going to be the key in this one. Where did he go? Third down and two. Incomplete fourth down. Finley was there, couldn't make the catch. Spave was defending for the Lions, a guy who was benched last week against Carolina. We've seen a lot of teams take this approach. Now you're going to see Tullock. He works a while around this way. He's able to get pressure at the last minute there on Aaron Rodgers inside, but still a ball right where Jermichael Finley could have made the play. You wonder if maybe he didn't see it coming. Last day hangs it high. A fair catch by Logan at the 15. The Packers had scored on five straight opening drives. They are shut down by the Lions here today. No score. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Packers have won 18 in the last 21 games. These two have played against one another. For the Lions, their 72nd annual Thanksgiving Day game here. Started back in 1934. From the 15, Stafford throws and completes. That's Burleson. And he's out to the 22. You know, Joe, you were talking about the glove and the broken index finger that Matthew Stafford has. And you know, it's pretty interesting what he's had to do. He's got a splint that runs over the top of that index finger. How you throw a football is beyond me, but that's why he wears the glove, because he couldn't get the proper grip on the ball, and that gives him a little bit of tackiness to where he can handle it. Watching him in practice, he's thrown it very well. He says it hasn't really bothered him, but watching him on handoffs, he was shaking it throughout the practice. In fact, even handing the ball off some with his left hand when going to his right, which is unusual. They fake an end around and they get it to Smith. He falls down after picking up a first down. Game six, A.J. Hawk was out there for the Packers. You know, in that glove, I know there was a time going back to, to when I was playing, I tried to use a glove at various times and you know, just couldn't find anything that worked. And, you know, I wondered how then the gloves have evolved over the years. And, you know, you and I got out there on the practice field and right. threw it around a little bit. I got to tell you, if I was playing in today's game, I think I'd wear a glove every week. In fact, that's what happened with Kurt Warner. You know, he finished his career wearing a glove, and I wouldn't be surprised if Matthew Stafford doesn't take this off because overall he's thrown the ball pretty effectively, even with the broken index finger. Coming off that five touchdown game. Big holes for Kevin Smith to run through. He gets 15. And up front, the Lions are moving bodies out of the way of Kevin Smith. Well, this is what I was referring to to Sunday's game against Carolina. I mean, you look at where he finally gets touched. That's a nice hole right in the middle. Center Dominic Riola doing an excellent job of getting a push. That's a that's nice work up front. You know, Kevin Smith, hey, he had a nice game on Sunday, did some good things, gave him a burst. But it was predominantly because of the production and the holes created by that offensive line. <laughs> Lions have been waiting for a running game. Here's Burleson making the catch, and he picks up five. The story with Kevin Smith, the guy who finished 09 in 2010 on IR, he's had shoulder, knee, thumb issues, 
and they just got rid of him with the lockout. He was unsigned. He was at home. He tried out and tried out in a fashion like the Lions had never seen him before. And all of a sudden, now in his third week back, he's the starter, and he looks like their best option. Well, when you think about it, I mean, he's as healthy as he's ever been this late in the season because he hasn't been playing through the first half of the year. He gets it again and carries it straight ahead. He's a yard shy of a first down as he got four. In fact, in talking with offensive coordinator Scott Linehan, Well, you know, of course, job at best. He's out because of a concussion. He's missed now the last five games, and a little bit concerned when you see him coming off the field, grabbing his head like that. But in talking with offensive coordinator Scott Linehan, he said that these are the types of things that he was doing back in college at Central Florida. You see, I think he's going to be fine. They just ripped the helmet right off his head. It's third down and one. Logan now in a tailback. They hand to Morris. The up back and he gets two and a first down. That's a nice job because if you think about it, the Detroit Lions do not have a true fullback. And so in order to run that type of what is called a fullback belly play, you then got to go with Maurice Morris. Now Keelan Williams has been the guy who they have used in those situations. He's the biggest back of those that are active today. But he put it on the ground last week. In fact, that fumble is what allowed Kevin Smith his opportunity. They have a run game going against Green Bay. You can keep Aaron Rodgers right where he is on the bench. Here's Morris. First down at the 35. Well, right tackle, Sherilis Gosder. Now, this is what he's going to be dealing with throughout this game. Matthews. Clay Matthews oftentimes likes to use that speed rush, but then when you start thinking speed rush, you get the bull rush like we just saw. It's a first down at the Green Bay 35. Blitz coming. Lions pick it up for a moment, and now a flag is thrown as Stafford is brought down. It's a hole. A loss of four on the sack. We'll see if the Packers want to accept the penalty. Illegal use of hands to the face. Offense number 76. Ten yard penalty. First down. That's Jeff Backus, and the Packers do accept the penalty. It's hands to the face, not a hold. And it's the same result. Let's take a look. Uh, it's Eric Walden that he's facing and there's the hand of the helmet and you know, Kevin Smith he's back in the lineup and he actually did a nice job against Desmond Bishop this Packers defense they like to bring those inside linebackers on a lot of different blitzes and pressure packages especially Bishop Kevin Smith's going to be seeing a lot of that Green Bay took the penalty so it's first and 20 instead of second and 14. Here's Smith. Brought down from behind. His knee was down. That's no fumble. A.J. Hawk made the hit in a gain of only two. Let's take a look at the end and see if his knee was down when this ball came out. Second down, 18 yards. Well, I left elbow was close. I don't know about yeah. the knee. Yeah, the knee did not, to me, Joe, look like it was down before the ball started to come loose. Elbow was down, so no fumble at second and 19. Solid. Four man rush. Here's Morris out of the backfield. And Maurice is to the 30. Woodson on the tackle, but a gain of 14 on second and 19. Of course, Calvin Johnson's a big factor in what the Lions want to do offensively. You see Morgan Burnett, he's working over the top. They're going to play inside out on him with Tremont Williams in the trail technique. And the, the Packers decided to play coverage. And so when you do that, it's essentially a middle linebacker then who's going to be covering that check down and the Lions take advantage of it and get a nice game. 50 squeeze. Third down and five blitz coming. Lions pick it up and this one gets away again and there are flags all over the field. Uh -huh. 
It's a hold against Detroit. Terry McCauley will give us the call. There are three flags on the field, but evidently only one infraction. Well, they, the Lions pretty much sent everybody Holding over to pick up offense Matthews. Offense number 87. Ten yard penalty, third down. So they're going to back him up. Instead of decline the penalty and force a fourth down, it'd be a 48 yard field goal try. There's the hole. <laughs> Clay Matthews is deciding that he's uh, he's going to work that bull rush here in this game. And Brandon Pettigrew drew the short straw on that play. He also had some help. They worked Maurice Morris, the tailback over there. So essentially double teaming Clay Matthews. But you know that's a great example of even when you're not getting sacks, you're you're making an impact in the game and that's that's the case each week with Clay Matthews. Hold on. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. On third down and 15 and complete for Burleson. And now the punt team will come onto the field and that means Ben Graham as that hold was important for Green Bay and for Detroit to push them out of field goal range. Yes it was and you know I think what the Lions that they've been able to move the ball a little bit and they've had some things like the penalty that have killed these drives and I know they were concerned coming into this game did not want to have another slow start and put the pressure on their defense to hold up. Here's a better punt. Is it effective? No, right into the end zone. And so Aaron Rodgers who started his last drive on the 22 starts this one at the 20. No score in Detroit. Today's game is sponsored by the Ford F-150, the only truck available with EcoBoost. By Sprint, all football, no limits, only from Sprint. And by K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. If you look at time of possession, that's been dominated by Detroit, but no points. No points, but it's also meant that this Packers offense has had to stand on the sidelines too, which is exactly where you want them. They are averaging 35 and a half points per game. The most in the NFL. From the 20, delayed handoff to Starks. Nowhere to go. And brought down from behind. Justin Durant was the first guy there. Vanden Bosch on the stop. No game. Vanden Bosch is one of those guys that you're not going to have the ball in your hand and not be moving forward for very long with him. You know, he was well beyond the play, but circled back and made the tackle. Delmas limps out. Chris Harris comes in. Former Chicago Bear has seen plenty of Green Bay. Pass caught by Nelson. And the tackle made by Aaron Berry, a gain of seven. Third down coming up. You know, what a stretch of games Jordy Nelson has had. You know, you think back to Sunday's game against Tampa Bay. If you were told that Greg Jennings would have two catches for six yards, or Michael Finley would have one reception for 30 yards, you'd feel pretty good about that. But instead, Donald Driver comes out. He has a season high in catches and yards. And then, of course, you got Jordy Nelson going for over 100 yards. They can beat you in a lot of different ways, I guess is the point. Third down and three. Blitz. Rodgers pass is caught but out of bounds is Jennings short of a first down by that much it's fourth down they have to get to the 30 the drive started on the 20 and Mike McCarthy says that's a bad spot looked like a good spot to me and here comes the punt team on for the Packers. Yeah, well, yeah, I can tell you, as, as, as a quarterback as well as, as a play caller, the thing that you hate is completing a pass on third and short and not having it be enough to pick up the first down. He's going to argue that it was not a good spot. I think it was. I think that whether it was the throw or the receiver, they just didn't get the proper distance. Pass day hits a beauty. And it drives Logan to the sideline. So a three and out. The Green Bay Packers, those are becoming more and more rare. 55 yard punt, winding down, quarter number one. Thanksgiving means friends, family, food, and Lions football. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Boy, they've got some guys, some stars to build around here in Detroit. Stafford, Calvin Johnson, and Dominican Sue. 
21 seconds left in this opening quarter. Big divisional battle, no score. Lady. <laughs> Handoff is to Smith, and he runs right into the replacement for Desmond Bishop, DJ Smith, the rookie out of Appalachian State. No game. A nice job by DJ Smith. He takes on the blocker, sheds him, and is right there in the hole to make the play. So he gets to celebrate that for a minute because there's a break. We're through one. One scoreless quarter here in Detroit on Thanksgiving. This continues for you after this. Green Bay has only run eight offensive snaps. Defense. Certainly not tired over on the sideline talking it over that front group. Second down and ten. We've seen some throws get away from Matthew Stafford here early. As he steps up, fakes a little toss, and slides with the first down out across the 35 to the 38. A 22 yard run, his longest of the year. Watch the middle linebacker right here, A.J. Hawk. You know, he's in man coverage, so he picks him up right there, and that's why that middle of the field opened up for Matthew Stafford. He's able to navigate the rush, and once he gets inside, he's got a lot of room there to run. And on his second Thanksgiving Day start against the Green Bay Packers, it's not only a season-long, but a career-long run of 22 yards. It's Kevin Smith. Makes a few Green Bay tacklers miss and picks up three. Detroit has had no problem getting the ball to the other side of the field, but then they've committed a couple of penalties, and so far they've been held off the scoreboard. It's second down and seven. This for the Lions, their best start since 93. I'm gone. Dom, should I single this? The record of seven and three and tied with Chicago in the division. Here is Burleson. Another first down carry into Green Bay territory. And again, of 13 yards. Kevin Smith, after he makes the Exchange, he comes up limping. I don't know if it's a hamstring or what exactly it is, but here's the play. You see the toss there to Burleson, but at the end of this, Kevin Smith, he came hobbling off the field. Jack, Jack. Yes. Yeah. First down to the Green Bay 48, so we'll keep an eye on Kevin Smith. Throwing it sidearm on a tight end screen to Pettigrew. Pettigrew picks up four. You take another look at that previous play with Kevin Smith. There's the toss to Burleson, but he was it was like almost as if it happened immediately coming out of stance. So you're talking about losing a guy like Kevin Smith, assuming you know whether or not he comes back to play. But then the other side of it on the defense is Lewis Delmas, the safety. You know that's a that's a huge blow to them. If he's not able to contribute anymore this afternoon. And right now, with an ice pack on his right calf, is Desmond Bishop, the starting linebacker for the Packers. Lions have it second down when we come back. No score. Timeout, Detroit. People have changed that much in thousands of years, and I think that they're still fundamentally driven by the same uh, internal needs, the same desires, and the same kind of hopes. Uh, it's not relevant to talk about certain things with certain people, especially my guy friends, you know, that I don't fill them in on every aspect of my life, whereas I might with my girlfriends or my mom or whatever. You know, like in your head, you assign everyone these roles. Once you like step back and get away from that, you realize, oh, these are the people that were actually there for me. Yeah, I definitely think that when you're a child, when you're younger, um, it's just more about showing up and being at a place and then seeing what happens. Like the idea of like, um, when school you just have recess and that's just a period of time for whatever you want to do, you can do. 
I know that there are people who are just driven by kind of internal confidence that lets them uh, see their path from here to there. I've never been that guy. I've always been part of a community, and I rely so heavily on the personal connections between me and the people who are close to me. It's, it's, uh, it's fuel. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon, your holiday tablet destination. By Radio Shack. Get into Radio Shack early for the hottest deals. Shack Friday starts at 5.30 a.m. And by the Lexus December to Remember sales event for a limited time at your Lexus dealer. The minute the Lions get excited about a running back again, Kevin Smith, he is carted off the field. Already <laughs> averaging over five yards a carry. The offensive player of the week for what he did last week against Carolina. Here's Stafford. Penalty flags fly. And Stafford is tripped up from behind by Eric Walden. And Terry McCauley's been busy. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense number 28. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Smith's replacement, Maurice Morris. Maurice Morris goes down low once once the defensive defensive players then engage, you know, and you've got Rob Sims, the left guard, who's who's coming off on the linebacker, and then Maurice Morris takes him low. That was on DJ Smith. Lions already have been penalized four times oh, yeah. for 45 yards. Lion. Second down and 20. Stafford backing up as he throws. He shows off his arm strength as he gets it to Pettigrew. A gain of 10. Look at what's happened here in this first half. I mean, the Lions have, as you said earlier, I mean, they've controlled the clock. They've had the ball for over 15 minutes. The Packers just a little over three minutes. You know, here in this game, no points, obviously. And one of the big reasons is the Lions, when they start to get something going, then all of a sudden they find themselves behind in the down and distance. You know, I mean, the penalty on the last play, second and long, they make up a little bit of it, but still sitting here third and ten. Those are hard to convert. And it's hard to convert usually against a Don Capers defense. Here's a blitz. A throwback, and that is broken up by Clay Matthews. Trying to get it to Maurice Morris, and Clay Matthews went up high to get it and knock it down. Well, he reads it beautifully, as you're going to see. Like he initially, it looked like he might have been in man coverage there on Maurice Morris, and then, of course, you know, he would be able to react to that play, but he wasn't. He just sensed that because they let him go, that something was coming back his way, and he made a nice play. Penalties again, part of stopping it. Randall Cobb makes the fair catch out across the 15-yard line. Third time with it for Aaron Rodgers. No score in Detroit. Now the defense for Green Bay talks it over. They have some things to iron out. The last time the Packers had it, Mike McCarthy watched his team go three and out for only the 16th time this season. Second fewest in the NFL coming into the day. Running, go! On first down, Rodgers drops it off for Ryan Grant. And Grant knocked down shy of the 20 of the 19 by Spave. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, we got some injury updates for you. First of all, Lions running back Kevin Smith is back in the locker room getting further evaluated for a lower leg injury. His return is questionable. On defense, Lions safety Lewis Delvis has a knee injury. His return also questionable. Second down and six. Penalty flags fly, and this one's against Detroit. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 92, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, second down. They call it against Cliff Averill. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting in today's game, not just with the Green Bay Packers, but a lot of these offenses, 
There was a time when you played on the road, you couldn't use any type of hard count. Now they're going with a silent count, but it's a pretty sophisticated silent count to where they're still able to neutralize a defensive pass rush and draw a team off sides like they did on that last play. Second down and one. Here's that back shoulder throw for Cobb incomplete. It's third down and one. And the Lions have already been penalized five times for 50 yards. And there's still 950 left in the half. Yeah, and I think you've got to be happy if you're the Lions that here you are looking at the game that you are at, at, at scoreless, you know, and tied, but yet knowing that your defense has done a pretty good job and offensively you've just not been able to capitalize because of the penalties that you just spoke of. It's third down and one. Extra men on the rush. This pass incomplete, but a flag is thrown as Wright was in the face of James Jones. And it's against Detroit. This will be a first down. Pass interference, defense number 21. Automatic first down. He interfered with 89 James Jones. Yeah, right there in the slot. Eric Wright and James Jones is going to be running a shallow crossing route. Eric Wright gets to the inside and it, you know what I don't see it. I see the hand on the back but not to disrupt the route. James Jones stumbled coming out of that trying to get underneath. The ball was thrown in that area. That's what the officials saw but I think it was a bad call. I agree with you. Bad call that gives Green Bay a first down. Here's Starks. A lot of room to run and Spivay makes the stop. After a carry of 12 yards. Well, that's a big call against Eric Wright. Instead of a punt, they get another chance and now get this from James Starks. So these guys are hard enough to slow down <laughs> besides the the unfortunate situation with getting called on a penalty pass interference when it didn't exist. James Starks playing today. I'm a little surprised by that after the injury last week that he suited up and was able to go. Had a sprained right knee in the fourth quarter against Tampa Bay, but he healed quickly. Pass is caught. And now out of bounds is the football, but it's a good catch by Jennings, good for eight. And a penalty flag for hands to the face. Ten yard penalty, first down. Against Green Bay will eliminate that catch. I didn't hear who they called it on there Joe but I know that the Lions were on the sidelines there arguing that it was not a catch They're They're even happier now getting the hands to the face call and then backing Green Bay up. Oh. Moves the ball back to the 34. Jones makes the catch and a nice tackle by Houston. And now he's slow to get up. Boy, the secondary, you know, you lose Delmas and you're a little banged up. It helps that you've got Chris Harris who's able to come in off the bench like he did last week and kind of shore that thing up on the back end. But now, you know, another injury to a defensive back when you're going to see, as we have throughout this game, predominantly three and four wide receiver sets by the offense for Green Bay. It was a five-yard catch by Jones. They look at Houston. We'll take a break. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. The hands to the face call was against Balaga two Ready, plays ago. We'll go. show you that if we get a chance, second and 15. Ready, go! Ready, go! Lions back out of the blitz. Grant makes two miss and gets tackled at midfield. A gain of 11. We'll see Belaga right here at right tackle. It's a good call there by the official. He's got Willie Young who's who's rushing and the hands to the face, which is what backed them up. But now they've put themselves in a good position because of some poor tackling on the last play here at third and four. Willie, go! Here's a blitz. Packers pick it up. Penalty flags fly. Number 30. Ten yard down. They get John Coon, the fullback. Yeah, John Coon, 
here he is in the backfield. He's their all purpose back. DeAndre Levy is the linebacker who's on the pressure and he gets him up underneath the neck. They were, they were in man coverage on on the back end there Detroit was they do a nice little natural picking action which freed Jermichael Finley up but all for not and coming back. So both of these offenses now struggling with once they've gotten some things going penalties setting them back. Well that's big instead of first and 10 at the Detroit 25. It's third and 14 at their own 40. Rodgers in trouble. Penalty flag again. Pass is caught by Jones, and he did not have enough for the first down. There's a helmet and a flag side by side, and this one is against Detroit. Well, Josh Sitton, he's going against Indomitian Sue, and Sue goes hands hands to, the to the face. face. Defense number off. 93. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, and Dominic Sue, he's had some penalties like that throughout this season. He's a guy who plays typically a little high. And when he get he's a big body and he's got these long extended arms and they get up and he goes right to the helmet and rips the helmet off. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're gonna see that. Well, they got Vandenbosch, who was guilty of the same infraction out on the edge. Either one could have gotten the penalty. Here's a handoff. Right. We talked to Indomitian Sue about that reputation that he's developed through the league of being a quote unquote dirty player and he said it doesn't bother me at all in fact he went to visit with Roger Goodell the NFL commissioner last month to get clarification on some of the fines and some of the hits that he's been called for. High snap. Here's Grant again. Grant brought down by Spave after a gain of five. And we saw the Packers a couple plays ago go with the screen pass, and there were some missed tackles, which put them in a pretty good down and distance. That's something that the Lions typically do a pretty good job of, is making the tackles after a receiver catches the ball. Obviously, that's that's extremely important against the Packers. It's third down and one. Rodgers down the sideline for Jones. Incomplete, no flag. And it's fourth down. And Eric Wright never even got turned around to the ball. The press coverage locked up outside. Got a hold there on the shoulder pad. The official doesn't see that. James Jones has a chance to make that play because Eric Wright never gets turned. He's just trying to play the ball once it then lands in James Jones's chest. So another drive stops. Penalties a big part of it and the punt goes into the end zone. The Lions will start at their 20. They've been able to move it and not been able to score. Pretty impressive what the Lions have been able to do defensively. Now they're without Houston. They lost Delmas early, and we've seen very little of Corey Williams, who's so good up front against this high powered Green Bay offense. No score. 543 left. Ruby one in the first half. Fake the handoff, throw it to Burleson, and he drops it. And it's been a quiet day for the top threat for the Lions, Calvin Johnson. You know the the Lions expected that they would have Charles Woodson on Calvin Johnson instead it's been mostly Tremont Williams now he's getting safety help over the top each time as you can see he's been single covered very very little in this game as you would expect and so far they've not been able to get the ball in his hands. Been open a couple of times Stafford's missed him. Ball's down the way this one tipped by Pickett and picked off by Matthews. The seventh interception. This one on a tip thrown by Stafford the last two plus games. That's Ryan Pickett right there. You're going to see that he comes out, and as he's working to the flat area, he's able to get a hand on it. And as we've talked about each week, I mean, when the ball gets up in the air against these Packers 
defensive players. I mean it is a feeding frenzy. No one reacts in football better to the ball in the air than the Packers. They lead the NFL interceptions. They're very opportunistic. Even though they give up a lot of yards they have created a lot of takeaways and that's why they've been able to survive. Second career interception for Clay Matthews. They've got 20 as a team and now with Brandon Sane in the backfield. The rookie out of Ohio State who they like a lot. Rodgers throws end zone Jennings penalty flag flies that is incomplete and it's pass interference against the Lions which will place it at the one Brandon McDonald pass interference defense number 33 Falker in the end zone ball replaced at the one yard line automatic first down how about that assignment for Brandon McDonald I mean you come in off the bench and then you're <laughs> asked to cover Greg Jennings I mean he's turned around he's not able to find the ball taking the place of the injured Chris Houston and you see Jim Schwartz the head coach in his third year he's watched his team commit eight penalties for 75 yards already and it's first and goal from the one starts a tailback. guy there was Sammy Hill. A nice push there by Sammy Hill. And that's what you got to have. Right here in the middle. You see the push that he has right there on the center wells. And when you drive that into the backfield and then you get Kyle Vandenbosch coming off the edge. Look, that's the kind of push that you have to have when you're down there along that goal line if you're going to be able to stop the running game. Second down and goal. And a timeout is taken by the Lions. They had players shuffling in and out. Some of the bigger bodies came off. And that's the second timeout used by the Lions this half. We go back and see why they needed a timeout. It's the rookie Nick Fairley who didn't know whether he should stay or go. And it's second and goal. Four wide receivers set. Touchdown, Jennings. Number eight on the year for number 85. Here's why it's tough for Detroit defensively. They run a natural pick here, and then they put Jennings into the flat you see when you're in man coverage there you've got to get Brandon McDonald if he comes underneath that that crossing action then you lay it over the top to Jennings he bubbles over the top and then it's an easy completion for a touchdown. It was an interception that set it up as Crosby knocks through the extra point. Off the right hand of Ryan Pickett into the waiting hands of Clay Matthews. Aaron Rodgers, that little leap celebration, seven zip. Ah. There are plenty of things to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. And here are five of mine my offensive line. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Love and life and soaking it all in as quarterback of the world champion Green Bay Packers is Aaron Rodgers. He gets the touchdown pass, he's been protected. By that offensive line, they hope to get Chad Clifton back soon. Rodgers has been sacked 25 times. And it's 7 0 Green Bay. This is Logan from inside the end zone. Gets a big hit. He got popped. And it was Smith. DJ Smith who hit him. Here's that penalty that set up the first and goal. The hold right there is not what was called, but at the end of this, right there, the left hand, as you see, grabs a hold of Greg Jennings' jersey. There was official right there, and Jim Schwartz has been arguing this throughout that play, and then as well after the touchdown during the TV timeout. But that was a good call by the official. Seeing that, he was right there on top of it. And that's what set up. The touchdown for him. Ended up being a three yard throw to Jennings. Stafford is nearly picked again. This time it's Tremont Williams stepping in front. 
was coming off an interception and this one had points written all over it. Well as soon as he see Calvin Johnson start to the slant route he immediately drives on that ball and then he's just looking to pick it up and see if he can intercept it two interceptions on Sunday against Tampa. He just does not typically drop the ball. He has yeah. been playing well going back to last season. He had a shoulder injury injury Boy. earlier in the year which slowed him down a little bit but he has been on a hot streak here in recent games. It's second down and ten. Maurice Morris right into the arms of Morgan Burnett, a gain of three. We look ahead to Sunday. The early games on Fox: the Vikings and the Falcons, the Bucks and the Titans, Panthers against the Colts and the Cards and Rams. Late games: Bears and Raiders is an interesting one with Caleb Haney getting the ball to the Redskins and Seahawks. Built for a tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame We're show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Where is he? Third down and seven. Stafford with good protection. Hits it wide open, Calvin Johnson. Thrown to for the fourth time in this half. Completed to for the first time. And that one good for 22. It was a nice route by Calvin Johnson. He starts as though he's going across the field. He gets the Jared Bush in coverage running across. Stafford gets hit at the end of that play. But good protection up front by that offensive line. When you start redirecting receivers like that on the intermediate routes, you've got to have time to let those things develop. A nice job by the Lions. What did Detroit need that? Single. On first down, it's Morris over the right side. Rang down by his neck by Eric Walden, a gain of nine. That's great hustle by Eric Walden. He was on the opposite side of the field, rushing, and he's able to run Morris down from behind. Get him to the ground. But yeah, you're right, Joe. A big third down conversion there by Detroit. Not not a down they've been real good on this year, but they have had some success here today against the Packers. Second down and one. And first down. That's Morris again. And with two and a half minutes left in the half. Timeout. The Lions also have in the back of their mind keeping it away from Aaron Rodgers. They may let this one wind down to the two minute warning. Redemption, see what they try to do. I mean, obviously, a lot of time, but they do just have the one timeout left. I would think they would have wanted to try to get one more play in before getting to the two minute warning. Maybe the Aaron Rodgers factor. Two minutes left in the half. Thanksgiving in Detroit, 7 0 Green Bay. It's been a painful Thanksgiving and first half for this group of five Bishop and Sitton, who left on the last possession the offensive guard with a knee for Green Bay. And then big hits with two defensive players and Kevin Smith running back for the Lions. First and 10, two minutes left. Keelan Williams brought down by DJ Smith playing in place of the injured Desmond Bishop one timeout remaining for the Lions who are in Green Bay territory for the fourth time in this game but have no points. Now this is one of those games where statistically you would look at it and say wow the Lions should should really be dominating this game but yet because of the one takeaway. Liar. The Packers hold a 7 0 lead. Watch your back. Second down and seven. Stafford, that head fake didn't work, and now slings it to the boundary. Pass is caught by Scheffler again at five, and it'll be third down coming up. And Matthews takes a pretty good lick at the at the end of that play by Clay Matthews. You're going to see he gets two steps. And that was a good non call. I mean, initially, you see a quarterback go down like that. You're thinking that, you know, a flag's going to come out of the pocket. But Stafford doing a good job of at least getting the completion. And as I said, this has been a down, third down, to where they've been good in this game overall. They've converted 
three of six. Much better ratio than they had been coming in. Third down and two. Going for Calvin. End zone. Incomplete. No flag. Jermon Williams was there defending. He's Green Bay's best in its fourth down. Look how far off he, Tremont Williams is playing, and yet, you know, this is the type of confidence that Matthew Stafford has in Calvin Johnson, and rightfully so. At six foot five, give him a chance. If he had underthrown this ball, then Calvin would have had a chance to turn around and go up and make a play like a basketball player. But because he led him so much, Tremont Williams was there to make the play. 47 yard try by Jason Hansen. Thanksgiving Day game, and he is 0 for 1. And with a minute two remaining in the half, it's still a 7 to nothing game. And it missed by that much as we welcome you inside our broadcast booth and can go a lot of different ways as we talk about what we've seen so far. The turnover led to the touchdown. And now missed opportunities really the entire half for Detroit. Yeah I think that if you're Detroit you've got to be so frustrated Jim Schwartz certainly I mean we showed the injuries that they've had those those defensive backs that's a big blow to this team and yet the defense has played well. They've kept it to a seven point game you can't fault them for the points given up and yet here this team trails. And it's an eternity on the clock for Aaron Rodgers what a good play made by middle linebacker Stephen Tulloch. Trying to get it to Finley. Second and 10. 57 seconds left. And three timeouts. The guys are here. The Visa halftime show's coming up with Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. Nickelback will perform. We'll hear from Jake Laser from Korea. Second and 10. Lions oh. have 202 total yards against Green Bay. Oh. No points. Let's go. This one's caught by Jennings, who has a touchdown, and a flag flies at the end of the play. And this one's coming back. It's offensive pass interference. There's also one in the backfield. Watch Kyle Vandenbosch here, and he does a twist. There are two fouls on the play. Pass interference, defense number 85. Personal foul, roughing the passer. I don't like the offensive rough. pass interference number 85. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Penalties offset. Second down. Hey, the, the pass interference are on Greg Jennings. You see, he extends the left arm. They're going to get that. But the, the roughing the passer penalty on Kyle Vandenbosch, I, I, I don't understand it. We get into this each and every time. You're going to see Vandenbosch 93 come around. He puts a hit on him. He goes to the shoulder. And then he goes to the ground with him. I mean, it's not a wrap. It's not a driving him into the ground. I think that Kyle Vandenbosch has a legitimate argument on that play. I think that's hitting a guy hard, but clearly, in my opinion, within the framework of the rule. On second down and 10. Pressure on Rodgers, who gets hit as he let it go. The pass incomplete. And it was Averill who got in there for Detroit. Third down and 10. Well, this defensive front, I mean, they're starting to take control of this game as they need to. Got fairly inside, but Cliff Averill comes around at the last minute, and then another hit on the ground, and Aaron Rodgers is expecting another flag. But I think that the play on Vandenbosch, I, I really don't know how you would coach it up or what you would ask him to do differently. Green Bay sideline was reacting to that last hit by Vandenbosch. No flag and the pass incomplete. There is a flag on this play. Holding offense number 75. Penalties decline. Fourth down. And this has been a real good half, all things considered, for this Detroit defense against the Green Bay Packers. Well, it really has been because this defensive line is starting to dominate, and they have to. This goes back to the penalty on Vandenbosch. You see, as he comes around, I mean, you could kind of make the argument that he maybe led with the crown of his helmet, but he hit him in the chest, and I just, I thought it was pretty good. But give this defense credit for coming off of that and making a big stop. Packers have only 86 yards. 
But a seven to nothing lead is Logan. Wants to get back to the spot where he originally caught it. 47 yard punt. And now a fight breaks out. They're going to throw a flag. Well, looks like they're going to get the Packers with it, too. That is a rookie tight end, Ryan Taylor, that was in it. Pat Lee is involved as well. And they threw a flag. Here's the end of it. A lot of contact is, is, is often the case down there, and then they get engaged with each other. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team number 22. Number 22 is disqualified. And they just threw Pat Lee out of the game. Well, you know, coming into this game that things would likely get pretty chippy. Of course, you got the Green Bay Packers who are undefeated as Mike McCarthy goes into there to get clarification from the officials. But, you know, obviously there's a lot at stake here for the Detroit Lions. And I think some people look at this game and they say, well, it's a foregone conclusion that the Packers are going to win the division, not if the Lions win this game. I mean, they play them again. There's a lot that can happen here down the stretch between these two teams. And the Lions, who have had a successful year, I don't want to say this is a measuring stick for them, but they clearly feel that this is the year for them to kind of show this Packer team that we are going to be reckoned with the rest of the way. That penalty takes it all the way out to the 29. One timeout left. And the pass is juggled and caught by Maurice Morris out to the 35. Clock continues to wind. A six yard gain and with absolutely no urgency. I'm a little surprised by that. They got a nice gain there on first down. They've got one timeout left, you know, but they're going to be happy here going in. Down seven, it appears. Underneath again, and that'll do it. Morris out to the 45 yard line. Crowd a little disappointed that the Lions didn't try for points at the end of the half. A frustrating half for the Lions. An opportunistic half for the Packers up by seven. The undefeated Packers against the seven and three Detroit Lions. Visa halftime shows coming up for Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. After this, from your local Fox station. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy 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 Thanksgiving. It's a seven to nothing game as we start the second half in just a moment and we also say happy Thanksgiving that was our crew that uh, little toss from Dave Schwalbe <laughs> our uh, spotter is that what you do up here in the booth and tell us why you have a football in your hand well uh, they were throwing around the crew and it ended up oh, here in the oh. booth. You know, I mean that's did you get it. that yeah I died. now I got it what do I mean what did we see in that first half it, it has to be awfully frustrating for Detroit to be down in this game. Well, there's no question. I mean, look at what Detroit was able to do offensively over 200 yards of offense in that half. More importantly, defensively, with really a depleted secondary, they hold the Green Bay Packers, who came into this game averaging over 100, or excuse me, averaging over 400 yards a game, held them to just 86 yards in the first half. I mean, that's an outstanding job by Jim Schwartz. And this coaching staff saw the graphic you can follow your favorite team all season long go to iTunes.com slash NFL so just to give you more numbers you said at 86 yards that's what Detroit did to the Packers offense that's all Green Bay had in the first half the Lions had four trips into Green Bay territory came away with no points the Lions however eight penalties for 75 yards and of a possible 30 minutes. Time of possession. The Lions had it for over 20 minutes of that first half, but no points. The good news is we're ready for football. The bad news is the stage is stuck. Down to our left, Nickelback used, and so now they finally get it off the field for the most part, although there's not a whole lot of room if you end up going through the back of the end zone. 
yep. they're going to actually pull the two teams off the field and we'll have a little bit of a delay here at the start of this second half. You know I think if you look at it again if, I mean if you're the Detroit Lions you say you know this is this isn't bad we're just down seven points but I've got to believe it's a little bit demoralizing to play as as well as they did defensively like I said offensively they moved the ball and and that was nice but they failed to come away with any points can they do it for a second half it it is somewhat unrealistic to think that you're going to completely shut down the Packers offensively the way that they did there in the first 30 minutes. Let's go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Well Joe penalties on the mind of both coaches. I talked to Mike McCarthy and he said that you know we did our homework on these officials and he said these officials are one it's a crew that throws a whole lot of flags. We should have been ready for it. Meantime on an injury note A.J. Hawk has a calf injury and his return is questionable. As for the Lions and Jim Swartz he also complained about the penalties. I asked him about the halftime adjustment. That was his biggest one to clean that up. Back to you. All right, Pam. So we'll add A.J. Hawk's name to that list. Now each side has lost three players, although Hawk looks like he's ready to go. Green Bay will start this second half with the ball. See if Corey Williams is out there much for Detroit here in the second half. He's a big force up front for the Lions on their defensive line. Well he is and he really didn't play all that much in the first half. Bobbing by a bad calf. Didn't call his name once. Here's Cobb from the end zone to start this second half across the 20 and he's knocked down near the 23. Bobby Carpenter on the tackle a gain of 26 on the return. And here are the offensive leaders for the Green Bay Packers. As Aaron Rodgers has been held in check. Well, they've been good, as we said. And one of the reasons is, is that defensive line, especially as the first half progressed, they started putting more and more pressure on Aaron Rodgers and dominating the line of scrimmage. That's going to have to continue. You talk about Corey Williams, he is in the lineup. And when you talk to offensive coaches, they get more concerned with him than they do in Dominican Sue. He wears 99 as Starks carries, gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain for James Starks, and it was the man in the middle, Stephen Tulloch, who made the stop for the Lions. You know, we talked about how improved this Lions defense is from a year ago, and in particular at the linebacker, at the linebacker position. And Stephen Tulloch, who they brought in from Tennessee, obviously knew the defense that Jim Schwartz ran. And he's been a great addition to this club. What did he do? On second and ten, this one is floated and caught. Jermichael Finley on Spivay. And a completion on second and ten of 26 yards. Spivay is split out wide on Jermichael Finley and yeah, that's just stealing right there. I mean, time after time, we see defensive backs who don't get turned to play the ball. And obviously, Jermichael Finley has a size advantage, a height advantage over him. And you put it up, give him a chance, and he makes a play. Longest Packer play of the day. 26 yards. And a first down at the Green Bay 49. Forced him out, but a flag is thrown. They're going to get Green Bay with a false start. Illegal formation, offense. The tight end was covered. Five yard penalty, first down. So the illegal formation cost the Packers five. Yeah, and those are the type of penalties that, that really that you just can't have the pre snap penalties, so they cover up the tight end, illegal formation. And that's just, that's just a lack of concentration out there by the wide receiver. First down and 15. Here's Nelson. Gets one block, but he needs a lot of help. And Jordy Nelson can make the 45. That's it. And when you talk about rallying to the football, that's what this Lions defense just did. A gain of only one. That's where they're they're really good. I mean, they do a lot of things very very well. You know, in practice the other day, Joe, on Tuesday when we were there, I was I was.
was impressed with a well, ball carry would run through the defense 30 yards downfield and you've got Nick Fairley and Kyle Vandenbosch they're running sprinting 30 yards down the field chasing the back and then coming back and you just typically don't see that type of hustle especially in a short work second down and 14 Rogers throws wide open driver has the first down and he's out of bounds at the 40. Picked up 15 yards and Donald Driver who had four catches for 72 a week ago has his first catch of the day. And you see Brandon McDonald I mean initially he looks like he's going to be in man coverage on Donald Driver and, and then just let him go and wasn't covering anybody. Well, you better better have your assignments right in this secondary against Green Bay because of Rodgers ability to find the open man and all the different weapons they can throw at you. Green Blitz. Green Bay picks it up and Jennings has a first down twisting down to the 21. They go play action get the linebackers to to come up and have to commit themselves to playing the run. Of course, they're on a, a run blitz. But that opens up a nice throwing lane then for Aaron Rodgers. Ryan Grant picks it up. The best drive we've seen from Green Bay. 52. Number 88. Five yard penalty. First down. They get Finley. That'll make it first down and 15. If you remember last year, the Green Bay Packers came here on December 12th. Bruce Stanton was starting for Detroit. Aaron Rodgers knocked out late in the first half with a concussion. Detroit won the game 7 to 3. Following week with Matt Flynn at quarterback, Green Bay lost at New England by four. They haven't lost since, including winning Super Bowl 45. Jennings has a first down inside the 10. Picked up 19 yards as he went around Aaron Berry. Well, as I talked about a little bit earlier in the game, this is one of the areas where Detroit is typically pretty good defensively. They're able to make the tackle. They don't give up a lot of yards after the catch, but that's what we've seen from Green Bay on this possession. Get the ball out quick and make these defensive backs make a tackle. Aaron Berry failed to on that last play. Now they just stopped the clock. Aaron Berry is going to have to come out of the lineup. He came up limping after missing on that tackle of Greg Jennings. So as they stop the clock, they're going to make Barry come out, and they're getting awfully thin in that secondary for Detroit. Well, they sure are, and it's John Wendling, who's the top special teams tackler, coming in now in the secondary. I don't even have him on my board. Well, he's there. <laughs> Six one two twenty two out of Wyoming. in particular in Green Bay as a team offensively inside the red zone they've scored nine touchdowns their last ten trips in and Aaron Rodgers in 264 red zone passes has thrown one interception and 75 touchdowns you know what he talks about down here is touchdown or check down so he immediately is going to look to see if he's got anything in the end zone if not he's going to check it down to the tailback. First and goal from the 12. Nelson started to run before the catch. Incomplete. And Rodgers comes away shaking his head. As Jordy Nelson, who before this year had never caught more than two touchdown passes in a season, has five this month. Second and goal. When I talk about the tailback, this time it's Brandon Sane. The rookie. 
backfield and oh. Mike McCarthy talks about some of the things that he does very well as a receiver. Here's a look at him. Singh gets to the edge and now cuts up, gets a hit from Eric Wright. Will set up third and goal, and you kind of get the feeling Green Bay is going to break Brandon Sane out on the world like they did James Starks last year down the stretch and into the postseason. He's a guy with 4-4 speed out of Ohio State. He runs the draw plays. They've got a package in for him on some passes. Didn't catch a lot of balls at Ohio State. I think Ohio State should have thrown more because Jake Ballard's proven he can catch it too. Oh! That was the first catch and carry by Sane. It's third and goal. Rodgers floats it. Driver incomplete. And a little scrum breaks out after the play again. See who this is called against, but a good stop by by Detroit, and maybe if this after is after the play, foul personal Detroit. foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 90 for kicking. Number 90 is disqualified. So not only is this a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct, but it will give the Green Bay Packers another shot at getting a touchdown. And Sue is kicked out of the game. Well, they can argue all they want about this one, but he's not going to get to play anymore this afternoon. Here he is at the bottom of that pile. A takedown there. Yeah, that's there it is. I mean, first of all, as he's trying to get up, Dietrich Smith, he's pushing him with his with his hand on the helmet. There's the missed throw by Aaron Rodgers. Had an opportunity, but but and Sue clearly, I mean, kicks him. Officials right there, they make the call. That's his second unsportsmanlike conduct penalty this season, and one that likely is going to really cost his line's team. BJ Raji is in the lineup. He had a touchdown carry last week. What a what a dumb penalty and a killer penalty for the Lions. And more flag. I mean, there it's just flag after flag after flag. Encroachment, defense number 96. Half of this is a goal. First down. Please set the game clock to 960. That's Fluellen. And there's the conversation between Jim Schwartz, the head coach, and Adamic and Sue, who's been fined three times for over $42,000. And he is out of the game. And goal. Rodgers keeps it. Comes back across the middle and incomplete for Corliss. We had him too, didn't he? And Averill can't get up. Well, without Sue in the middle, Cliff Averill, that's that's a, that's a <laughs> keep saying it, another huge blow to this team. But there's a throw to Corliss, and it was behind him, and so he's trying to come back and make a play, and he's unable to. It'll be second down and goal when we come back. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Disney's The Muppets, now playing in theaters everywhere. By the 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. April looks to be okay. It's second down and goal. Here's Coon. John Coon is in for the touchdown. That's his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And those extra points made possible because of the penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct by Indomitian Sue. Well, if you're going to run the ball and you've got B.J. Raji in there at fullback, why not get right in behind him like John Kuhn does? They still are almost able to slow him down enough, but pretty tough duty there for Detroit. Frustrating again for them after making the stop, and there's re it's really there, there's no defense you can give Indomitian Sue. Just not a very smart play, a dumb play. And one that he quite frankly could be facing a suspension. 
think back to Albert Hainsworth, which was a little more egregious, but still kicking a player while he's down and considering his history. Having already met with him calling the meeting with the commissioner, there'll be more to come on that. 14 to nothing, Green Bay. It's a 14 to nothing Green Bay lead, an 11 play drive to open up this second half because of a penalty instead of a field goal try. It ends up in seven points. Stefan Logan is waiting for the kick from Crosby. About midway in the end zone, Logan. Out near the 19. Let's go back to the Indomitian suit penalty and unsportsmanlike conduct ejection. We're going to see it right in here. And Evan Dietrich Smith, he actually does a great job on the block. That's an excellent block on his part. Indomitian suit doesn't like it. He jams his helmet into the turf to start with about three times and then at the end of this is when he makes the kick. Oh. There's just no place for that in football. <laughs> you know, this, this Detroit team came into this game wanting to show that they weren't going to be bullied around by the big boys on the block and they've really shown a lack of maturity in a lot of areas throughout this game. From the 19 handoff is to Morris who picks up four. Jim Schwartz has watched his team commit 10 penalties, turn it over on an interception, miss a field goal. And they are at New Orleans next, at home against Minnesota, at Oakland, and they could very well be without their biggest presence up front defensively in Dominican Sioux for multiple games after that. Ejection and unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Burleson makes his spin move and gets out across the 35 near the 38. Coming around Woodson, a gain of 15. When you think about it, I mean, this is uh, this is what the Lions have been doing all season long. At least three times this year, they've been able to come back from a deficit. This one's not anything like some of the others that they've they've had to overcome. But think back to Sunday when they got behind the Carolina and then they came out and rattled off five of six or five touchdowns in their first six possessions to start that second half. Well, they need something here. Morris hit the hole hard and got out to the 41 a gain of three stopped by Eric Wald. We've talked about a lot of the, the injuries that that have occurred and the players that that aren't in the game and yet you know how do you weather that of course everyone remembers last year <laughs> the injuries that the Packers had and their ability to overcome all of those and go all the way and win the Super Bowl so you know, a lot of these guys that they're relying on they're accustomed to having to come in and perform at a high level. It's second down and seven. Stafford throws and for a first down. That's Morris who's been busy. A gain of eight. Francois on the tackle for Green Bay. Well, you just get the feeling if you're Detroit, you're trying to prove something here today. You've lost nine of your last ten Thanksgiving Day games. You've got a divisional rival here. The undefeated Packers. You just watched Indomik and Suki get kicked out of the game. You've missed opportunities. Something has to happen right here on this drive on this possession down by 14. <laughs> Stafford over the middle gets Pettigrew. And he is to the 44 of Green Bay a completion of seven yards. You know, when you think about it Joe when both of these teams got up got off to such good starts and I'm talking about early in the season when they were at 2 and 0 3 and 0. Everyone was already then kind of looking forward and ahead to this game talking about what a great matchup this was going to be on Thanksgiving and then of course the Lions coming into this game at seven and three Packers undefeated of course but you know, how is a young team a team that really hasn't been in this position before how are they going to play. Second down and three. They fake it to Williams down the middle picked off by Francois. And the second interception thrown by Matthew Stafford. 
backup linebacker Robert Francois gets his first. He had to go up to get it. Another turnover by the Lions down 14. Time to talk on the sideline. Matthew Stafford and offensive coordinator Scott Linehan, who's done such a nice job here in Detroit. Second interception. And now the Green Bay Packers have it up 14 to nothing with five and a half to go, third quarter. Back to work is Aaron Rodgers. Starting at the 35. Rodgers puts it up and has Jones. James Jones room to run. Inside the five and in for the touchdown. go play action and you're going to see the safety bite right here and so because he comes up expecting run then you've got one on one with no safety help down the middle of the field and you've got outside leverage there by the corner James Jones just has to basically make the catch and once he does there's no way you're going to be able to make a play on him hopefully he caught his life story during our pregame the focus of a feature done by Pam Oliver and now James Jones goes 65 yards for a touchdown. That's what you talk about you know I mean they were held at bay throughout that first half Lions defensively did an excellent job better than anybody's been able to do against this team but how long could it last not very long. Player down Brandon McDonald they look at him we'll take a break. Now 14 points off two Matthew Stafford interceptions. Francois got the pick. Rodgers a long touchdown to James Jones. 21 nothing. Oh, we miss you, honey. I'll be home soon. Until then, I have my wingman helping me out. Tommy? I helped Dad pick it out. It's beautiful. Behind every well, the Detroit Lions have thrilled their fans all season long with comebacks. Talked about it twice already, and now they're in a 21 to nothing hole. Here at home on Thanksgiving to the Green Bay Packers trying to go to 11 and 0. Logan will take it out, hoping for a quick strike. Stays on his feet and is out of bounds, out across the 25, knocked out by Jared Bush. Here comes Matthew Stafford, who's been picked off twice today and now has eight interceptions in his last two and a half games. And not healthy with that broken tip of his right index finger. The ball is at the Detroit 27. Yeah, I think there's maybe some people that, that maybe would think that uh, the finger's giving him some problems. I don't think it's comfortable, but the interceptions that we've seen have not been because the throws have been bad. They've been because of the, the, the first one got tipped, obviously. The second one was just a bad decision on his part. Stafford completes to Calvin Johnson. And he picks up five. Francois, who just is coming off that interception, and it was playing out there defensively with DJ Smith. So AJ Hawk is now on the bench. We heard that he was iffy coming back. And it's Francois and DJ Smith in the middle. And this one's picked. Woodson gets number six. And the third of the day for this Green Bay defense, which has intercepted 22 passes this season to lead the NFL. And the reason is, is because Detroit just has been unable to blow the top off this coverage. You see Charles Woodson is, is cluing Matthew Stafford the entire way and he drives on the ball. He's anticipating a short route with second and medium. And he just goes after it a little bit more than what Brandon Pettigrew does. Pettigrew doesn't anticipate that he's got Charles Woodson battling or bearing down on his back. It's just a nice play by Charles Woodson. Woodson just literally grabbed it right out of his hands. 
second all alone now Woodson is in interceptions across the NFL with six. Here's Cobb. Wright brings him down, but the rookie Cobb picks up nine and a half. And Charles Woodson on this Thanksgiving gives it to a Packer fan, and there are plenty of them here in Detroit today. That guy's unbelievable. I mean, he's in his 14th season. And for him to continue to play it, of course, he had a great year last year. I mean, an MVP type season. And you just think that he's going to slow down. You talk to these coaches, he doesn't cover the way that he once did, but tell you what, he is still a playmaker for that defense. Second down and one, and Grant's got a first down inside the 20. Coming up on four minutes left in this third quarter. You can get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to get NFL action right on your phone. You know, going back to Charles Woodson, they signed him to a big contract a couple years ago, and the idea was, well, when he can't cover anymore, we'll move him to safety, but I don't think you want him back there deep. I mean, like I said earlier, good things happen when he's right around the football in close. Where it's being snapped, and he proved it again with that interception. Yeah, basically, it moved him to linebacker. Yeah. yeah. He's a great tackle, too. And off is to Grant again, and he picks up two. Brought down by DeAndre Levy. You just kind of feel the, the air being sucked out of this dome, you know. At halftime, down seven points. And Boy, Green Bay just came out here to start this second half with the turnovers, and then the big play, of course, to James Jones. And Detroit Lions clearly, they need a big stop. More importantly, they, they could use a takeaway right here. Green Bay can change the feel of the game quicker than any team in the NFL with what they can do offensively. Second and eight. This one's knocked out of the hand of Aaron Rodgers and recovered by Balaga. Cliff Averill knocked it out, and Balaga saved the turnover. It's a great job by Cliff Averill. Coming around the corner, you'll see Brian Balaga is the one who's trying to slow him down, and Aaron Rodgers doesn't sense it enough to be able to step up, but he got it, and a favorable bounce there. For the Packers to be able to get on that and recover it, that would have been a nice job defensively by the Lions that they have gotten off this field, not given up any points. A loss of 11, it's third and 19. Play clock at two. Now they just reset it. Cohen with a catch, breaking tackles. Makes the field goal try that much easier as he picks up 10. Yeah, I think that's the point, Joe. And it's a good job by Aaron Rodgers. I mean, really understanding the situation. Third and long, unlikely you're going to be able to convert it. They're playing deep in coverage. Hit Cohn and just help out your kicker with a more manageable and makeable field goal. It was the tank away, literally taken away by Woodson out of the hands of Pettigrew. Crosby missed last week, his first miss of the year. Made 23 straight. 35 yard try. And he's good. That makes it 24 0 Green Bay in this divisional matchup on Thanksgiving. Twenty-four to nothing game here on Thursday on Sunday. Here are the matchups for the NFL on Fox. Vikings and Falcons early. Same for Bucks and Titans, Panthers, Colts, Cardinals, and Rams late. An interesting one in the Bay Area with the Bears and the Raiders, Redskins and Seahawks as well, starting with a built board tough. Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. You know, you and I had an opportunity to do that championship game last year and see that when Cutler went down, Caleb Haney coming in off the bench, I thought he did a nice job, you know, with no, no practice time. And everybody's concerned, and rightfully so, when you lose a guy like Cutler. But I fully expect Caleb Haney to come out and play pretty well. Meanwhile, with Kyle Orton's release in Denver, many expected him to go back to Chicago. But the Chiefs. Lost Matt Castle for playing Kyle Orton. So he will not go back to Chicago. Try to bail them out of trouble. Part of
of that Cutler trade a few years back. And we'll go back and take a look at those interceptions that the cut or uh, that Matthew Stafford had. Watch the safety right here. He works to the middle, and so where you should then go with the ball. I mean, you got a chance, but you got to navigate Francois, which you're unable to do. But the guy who opens up because of the safety play was was uh, Scheffler up the seam. But here's the other one. When you got Charles Woodson who just drove on the ball and he's just anti anticipating scheme more than anything else. I mean that wasn't necessarily a bad decision by Matthew Stafford. The late handoff is to Morris. He's hit by Walden who grabs his left knee. And now he's hurt. A run of 14 yards and Walden will limp off the field and they're losing linebackers left and right and they started the day. With Zombo, Lattimore, and Soto unavailable and not active. Since 2007, NFL Play 60 has been traveling the country, helping the youth of America to be more active and healthy. This spring, the NFL Play 60 bus will come to a new deserving community. It could be yours. Visit NFLRush.com slash bus to find out more. Walden who came in with three sacks was in on that tackle of Maurice Morris then got hit by Pepra his teammate back of the left leg and that's what has Eric Walden limping off with 42 seconds left in this third quarter and Green Bay hoping to go to 11 and 0 for the first time in franchise history. Last time they were 10 and 0. They were here on a Thanksgiving in Detroit and lost to a defense put together by Don Schuler. Got a job as a head coach to start that tremendous run the following year for the Colts. Maurice Morris brought down by Matthews. A gain of one and this big crowd wants to see Detroit go to the air with 15 seconds left in the quarter. Second down and nine. There's Morris again. Francois can't bring him down before he's got a first down. And that's how this third quarter will end here in Detroit. 24 0 Green Bay. The NFL on Fox Thanksgiving special will continue after this from your local Fox station. Fourth quarter, the final quarter of play, and the Lions trying to get something going. They've been able to move it, have not been able to get onto the scoreboard down by 24. Stafford in trouble will pull it down and gets tripped up from behind. A run of three yards. CJ Wilson got it. You know, obviously down as many points as they are here. It's second down at seven, but the Lions are, are huddling up. You know, down 24 uh, to, to end that third quarter, they had gone to a, a no huddle. There's got to be a lot of urgency, and, and you've got to, of course, the first one's typically the hardest one to get. I mean, they haven't gotten one yet, but we've got to start driving the ball down the field. Second down and seven. Five men on the rush, and this is Williams. Keelan Williams is brought down by the rookie DJ Smith, the eight of six. Jay Smith has been impressive. We actually talked to Mike McCarthy, the head coach of the Green Bay Packers, last week. Asked him about the depth and about these young players, and he said, Our rookies and guys on our practice squad get in an hour before the veterans and get an hour's worth of work with their position coach before the vets get in, and they really reap the benefits of all that hard work as they have guys step up week after week. Here's Johnson. He's been bottled up for the most part. He's got a first down at the 16 of Green Bay. A gain of 18 yards. It was Morgan Burnett. He comes up. It initially looked like he was going to pick up Calvin Johnson. They're in zone coverage back there, but just a nice void there in the middle and a pretty nice gain. You know, you talk about what they do in Green Bay as far as developing their young players. Everyone tries to do that, but there's not as much emphasis, I don't think, in most places like Green Bay. Handoff is to Williams. Touchdown! Exactly what the Lions needed. A 
quick strike at the start of the fourth. They're going to see Kalen Williams there, and they're going to run the draw. And they get a good push. Rob Sims comes around the left guard. Good job of executing by Detroit. And you're right, Joe, that's exactly what they needed. I mean, the first score is always the hardest to get. And now it's going to come down to whether or not the defense is able to make some quick stops if the Detroit Lions are going to be able to climb their way back into this game. They are going to try and do it by scoring three touchdowns and converting three two point conversions. Here's the first try. They're 0 for 1 this season. Pass caught. And it's 24 8. Titus Young. That starts a long, what they hope will be, march back. It's a 16 point game in Detroit. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. By Walmart, with over 2 million TVs in stock. Head to your local store for big savings on big brands. And by Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, in theaters December 16th. With that last touchdown, the Lions have now outscored their opponents 103 to 41 in the fourth quarter, and they are just beginning that march back on the scoreboard if they're going to get there down by 16. About to kick it back to Green Bay. This is Cobb. Handle Cobb can't make it to the 15. We'll go back. Sorry, Joe. Go back and take a look at this touchdown run, and you're going to see Brandon Pettigrew at tight end. A good job of blocking on Clay Matthews, and then up the field, Nate Burleson. He's going to be in the slot position, and he comes up and takes out Charles Woodson. It's a nice job. Now, Charlie Pepper, he had a chance at safety to come up and make a tackle short of the goal line, but as is the case for this Packers defense, they oftentimes rely on the takeaways, and he was going for the strip rather than the tackle. This is a Detroit defense that has 23 takeaways, tied for second in the NFL, and they need something here down by 16. No takeaways today. And without Indominus Sue. Here's Kuhn over the right side. He gets across the 15 to the 16. And now a recap. Three interceptions thrown today. That was the first. Pass interference. Paul against the Lions set up the first touchdown. That was Sue getting ejected for kicking. And there's the last of the three interceptions thrown by Stafford. The undefeated Packers. Second and seven. Rodgers keeps it, floats it for Jennings. Catch is made by Greg Jennings. Aaron Berry never turned his head. 31 yard completion for Jennings. We've seen it from Aaron Berry. We've seen it from Brandon McDonald. You see, they're locked up and never turn and make a play on the ball. I mean, it's stealing. It's as if there's nobody covering when you've got a defensive back that isn't turning and looking to try to make a play on it because the receiver clearly has the advantage. He's able to adjust to the throw wherever the throw is. The guy's just hoping that the ball hits him and that they don't execute the catch. 31 yard completion. Out to the 47. Handoff is to the rookie save. Sane takes it to the Detroit 49 again of four. You know, you go back to the decision by Jim Schwartz to go for a uh, two point conversion. I, I agree with that because otherwise, if you're kicking extra points, you're making it a four possession game. At least by going for two, you can cut it to a three possession game. And if you fail, if they score again to convert the two point conversion, then on the fourth possession, then you're just having to score a touchdown as opposed to a field goal. So. The long and short of it is, it gives him a chance to have fewer possessions to tie this ball game if, in fact, the defense can make a stop. Second and six. Quick throw. Nelson tripped up. A nice tackle is made by Eric Wright. Got on the edge again of two. Yeah, it sure was because you know he had help that was there to to make a play on Nelson, but 
Jordy Nelson was going to pick up the first down if he doesn't make the tackle here. And with each first down, that's critical because the Packers then are going to be able to take more time off the clock. It's a big third down right now for this defense. And a timeout is taken by Detroit. With all these injuries in the secondary, the guys coming on and off the field, and before a third and four, timeout Detroit, their first of the half. Like Bill Belichick used to use Troy Brown of the Patriots, the receiver on defense because of the injuries. 55. Now it's Schwartz using Rasheed Davis in the secondary on third and four. Rodgers wrapped up down he goes and it was Durant who made the play and a big stop on third down for Detroit and the guy they put Rasheed Davis on is Greg Jennings in the slot and that's a heck of a job right there locked up anticipating they're just going to go to the first down markers nice coverage across the board Aaron Rodgers had nobody open. That's a that's a heck of a play right there by Justin Durant to keep the Packers from picking up that first down. Jim Schwartz, who was a scouting assistant for Bill Belichick back in '93 with Cleveland, roomed with Pioli and Mangini, using one of his receivers, and he did a good job on Jennings. Now Maste hits it end over end. And a fair catch called for by Logan. It's a two-possession game at the moment. Lions have it nine and a half left down 16. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Visa. More fans go with Visa. The 1962 game was great. And boy, did we put a whipping on them. We sacked Bart Starr 11 times. I Snatched the ball out of the air and ran it back in for a touchdown myself. No, I didn't spike it. I threw it up into the second deck of the stadium. Those guys never get a ball up there. <laughs> Defensive end Sam Williams talking about that 1962 game. The Lions beat the then undefeated Green Bay Packers at Tigers Stadium. It's a first down. For Detroit down by 16 and the pass is dropped by Calvin Johnson. 1961 Lombardi had won his first title with Green Bay 62 undefeated favored again they had beaten Detroit 9 to 7 in Green Bay earlier. They sacked star 11 times in that game and were up 26 to nothing won it 26 to 14 and as we mentioned Don Shula became the 33 year old head coach to the Colts the next year. 63 mainly because of what he did for a national audience to that great Green Bay offense. Green Bay went on to win it all again at 13 and 1 beat the Giants. This is Raji. And he brings down Stafford a sack on second and 10. BJ gets his third of the year. They just know where for Stafford to go with the ball you know right now the Packers they don't have anybody on defense with the communication helmet from the sidelines A.J. Hawk down Desmond Bishop down he would be the guy who would wear it when A.J.'s not in the game they're having to signal everything from the sidelines three man rush Stafford underneath and the tackle is made by Pepra on Maurice Morris that'll bring up fourth down the punt team comes on for the Lions a quick three and out. Well, I don't quite understand that one. I mean, I know that on third and long, you can't always throw the ball where you want to throw it. But in a game like this, I think you've got to start trying to, to force the ball a little bit. And there were some chances down the field for Stafford. Graham hits it end over end. Cobb stays in Back to the 34. That's where the Packers will have it as they lead on this Thanksgiving by 16. From inside our truck on this Thanksgiving day from Detroit, Colby Bourgeois, Rich Russo, Richie Zions, our producer. Oh my guys. 
Smile. I mean, just a half a smile, Richie. It won't kill you. <laughs> Eight and a half to go. The Packers have it up by 16. Handoff is to Grant. Ryan Grant picks up three over the right side. Aaron Rodgers has had a quarterback rating of at least 110 in every game this season. He's at 121.5, which will actually bring him down a bit. He's at 128.8, first by a mile in the NFL coming into this action today. Yeah, and I know that if you're at home watching this game, and you know, it's been a pretty quiet performance by Aaron Rodgers relative to other games this year. I mean, even he said it the other day, he's holding himself to a much higher standard. And off to Grant. He has not thrown an interception. He's coming off an interception at home against Tampa Bay. He's got two touchdowns, 271 yards. And you wonder, Troy, with seven and a half to go, if he will end up winning. The galloping gobbler award here on this Thanksgiving. Well, I know he was uh, pretty upset the last time he played on Thanksgiving and and failed to win it. So it's heavy on his mind as he waits on a third down and five snap. Where did he go? Scott Wells. Rogers throws and completes. That's Jones. And James Jones, who has a 65-yard touchdown today. A beautiful adjustment and a catch, and they do this better than anybody. Uh, you know, this is uh, James Jones, who last week failed to have a catch and really hasn't been all that involved here over the last three games. But today, he jumps up and now with his third catch is closing in on 100 yards receiving. And, you know, that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier in the game is that there are five guys that catch the ball on this team that are capable of beating you on any given day, and each of them has. Last week it was Jordy Nelson. Today it's been James Jones's turn. Aaron Rodgers has hit nine different receivers today. Grant takes it inside the 35, a gain of three. So when you look at the overall numbers for this offense, they're great. Individually, all the yardage and the touchdowns, everything is spread out. Between Jennings, who has eight now. Jordy Nelson has nine. Driver with a couple. Jones now with five. To say nothing of the running game and what their backs do out of the backfield or the tight ends. Finley with five. Crabtree got his first last week. Second and seven. Here's Coon. April cleaning up at the end. Tullock in there on the stop. No gain. It's third down. This December, two of the most storied conferences in college football culminate their seasons with two epic championship games for the first time in their history. And we'll be there. To bring it to you on back-to-back -back nights, Pac-12 championship game is Friday, December 2nd. The Big Ten championship game Saturday, December 3rd. Both games only on Fox. Third down and seven. Completes to Cobb for the first down. And now you add the rookie to the mix who's got one receiving touchdown, one returning a punt, one returning a kick, and it's a first down for Green Bay. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's almost not even fair considering all the, the weapons that we've talked about that Aaron Rodgers has, and then they go out and, and bring in Randall Cobb, who He's still learning the game. I mean, he's been a heck of a return man when he's caught the ball. He's had some problems fielding it at times. But he's an explosive player. And they've compared him to oh, Greg shit. Jennings when he came into the league oh, as a rookie. And it's a pretty high comparison right there. Two straight third down conversions for the pack. As Cohn takes it to the 19. Well, let's look ahead now. As Green Bay... We'll leave here 11 and 0. They are next at the Giants, and we will be there on December 4th. That is a week from Sunday, a late game, and that'll be 
least in my mind their biggest challenge it's on the road they do end the season at home with the Bears and then these Lions. Joe next week against the Giants on the road probably their toughest test I thought that this game today and next week against the Giants were the two teams that potentially could knock off the Packers not that any of the, the teams remaining can but the reason is is that they can get pressure on Aaron Rodgers with their down line the Lions did that throughout the first half the Giants certainly are capable of doing that this to make it a 19 point game. Crosby has missed only once all season. Take a break, come back. Green Bay will kick it off of 19. Aaron Rodgers has had another big game. He's getting congratulations as this team will move to 11 and 0. They have taken over in this second half, scoring on four of their last five possessions. They've taken it away three times defensively with three more interceptions. 22 on the year. And with 243 left. Detroit about to get it back. One of the up backs takes it. That's Rasheed Davis who's just been playing defense. He's able to cross the 20 and that's it. Welcome you inside our broadcast booth with Pam down on the field, Joe and Troy, and that's what uh, we will be giving out. It's in its third really incarnation. <laughs> the Galloping Gobbler has been redone again. I'll tell you what, this thing's heavy too. It weighs <laughs> probably weighs about 40 pounds <laughs> right now. But yeah, this is something that uh, whoever receives this right now, I got to tell you, old number 12 is looking like he might be the recipient that would proudly put on his mantle. Back at the house. I think it's between two guys. 12 or the guy he's thrown it to a couple of times at one big play, James Jones. And Aaron Rodgers was not happy when he didn't get it a couple of years ago. It was this catch and run made by Morris. Donald Driver got it that day, had a big day receiving. But Rodgers was left at the altar, didn't get that award. Yeah, but that doesn't surprise us. I mean, it's one of the most coveted awards in all of sports. I mean, I could understand the disappointment. I will give you a headline from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Story written by Bob Wolfley. Galloping Gobbler still manages to dodge significance. Oh, come on, Bob. <laughs> I'm just that's it. That's what the that's what they think of it in Green Bay, and I would imagine if they think of it that way well, in Green Bay around the country, it even lands with a louder thud. That's not how Aaron Rodgers thinks of it. Nate Burleson made that last catch. First down, Detroit, as we approach the two minute warning. Pass is caught. Hefra on the tackle. Pettigrew on the grab. And we've got two minutes left. This has been a rough day for the Lions. Win number 11 for the Packers. Two minutes left. Hey, while all of us are in 
Detroit on this Thanksgiving one of the greatest producers sports producers in television history and part of the Fox family since we started covering the NFL in 1994. Bob Stenner is recuperating and made everybody in this company smile when we heard that that pass is incomplete. That he was doing very well after surgery. It was a scary situation for a while but Bob Stenner who is such a close friend to so many including you Troy is on the mend and we'll be back in the truck in a couple of weeks. Yeah we're all thrilled to, to hear about that from Bob and even going back to when I was playing. Spent a lot of time over there in Maui in the offseason hanging with Mr. Stenner. Long time producer with Sandy Grossman the director for best team ever to do this job. That summer all in John Madden. Packer cheer breaking out those Lions fans who remain try and drown it out as Stafford slides and the third down. If you're just tuning in, you look at the score, you think, well, it's a lopsided Packer win. But in the first half, the Lions had a couple of chances moving the ball, and they just couldn't do anything with opportunity, and the Packers have taken over. That was the story of the game, and you kind of sense that. You know, I mean they played about as good as they could have there in the first half defensively. And yet couldn't take advantage of it. Here's Williams for the first down, 30 seconds, 32 to be exact, and the Lions will take a timeout. And pretty explosive offensively in this second half, under 90 yards total offense for the Packers in that first half. And you know, here they are with 350 yards total for the game, and you just can't keep them down for very long. And they weren't able to in the second half, the Lions, that is. Lions are out of timeouts. This organization, as you look at Mr. Ford, has done an about face. And this is a franchise that has frustrated fans with a lot of losses that have piled up. An 0 16 season in 2008. They haven't made the playoffs since 99. They are one win away from securing their first non losing season since 2000. And from Martin Mayhew, the GM, to Jim Schwartz, the head coach, to the stars they can build around, they've got a good thing going here with the Lions. Yeah. Williams makes the catch, picks up nine and a half. You know, when you start the year out five and zero, oh, just having a winning season isn't going to be enough for this team. You know, and yet as we talked about, they're in a dogfight. They're in a real dogfight after this game to make it in as a wild card team. They've got a little bit of a break here. Offside, for us. defense number 52. Half distance to the goal, first down. But they travel to New Orleans next, and and that's not going to be easy. I mean, you look at that schedule that they have remaining. It's uh, it's going to be a real challenge for them, and they may have to do some of it without Indomitian Sue, yeah. as we showed a few times with that kick. Of Evan Dietrich Smith was disqualified from this game. It was a non-football act which could lead to a suspension back in the end zone and a touchdown to Calvin Johnson with 11 seconds to go Calvin Johnson gets his 12th receiving touchdown of the season he had 12 last year There's a drive obviously for for Green Bay where they were giving up a lot of yardage just not wanting to give up a big play and so relatively easy drive there for Detroit to come away with the touchdown. It's 27 to 15 with 11 seconds to go as we look at the playoff picture in the NFC. You see the division leaders on your left. Green Bay 11 and 0. After today San Francisco 9 and 1. They are right on the heels of the Green Bay Packers and New Orleans leading the South Dallas is leading the East but they have two games remaining with the Giants They play them twice in the final four weeks the Giants are in the hunt with Atlanta right now you see where the Bears and the Lions are in that wild card chase yeah the East clearly up for grabs but. That's going to be a fun game tonight with San Francisco at Baltimore and I think that's the best thing that the Packers have going for them more than likely. 
is the fact that the 49ers are playing so well that even though they'll wrap up their division here in no time at all at least they're going to have to keep playing in order to try to secure home field advantage throughout the playoffs. I, I was going to say I think the 49ers overall tough game tonight overall you know not a bad schedule to keep on winning not a bad schedule and the kind of defense that could give this Green Bay Packer team trouble if they meet up in the postseason. Here's an onside kick try a little punch kick it takes a hop and it's picked up by driver we'll have one more snap and that'll be the end of the day. There is a flag down back where the Lions kicked off. No. Well that 49er defense that you talk about. Team, five yards added to the end of the play first down. It's really good but that team in general I mean they're they're about as complete a team as, as we've covered. You know this year they're good really in every facet of that team. The only thing they don't have they don't have the big explosive plays offensively at the wide receiver position. And that's why most all their games are, are low scoring tight fits. You know they've had some games where they've, they've been able to run away with them but they're a good team. Aaron Rodgers takes a knee. The Green Bay Packers are officially 11 and 0 for the first time in franchise history as they beat their divisional rival the Detroit Lions by a final of 27 to 15. Jones with a big day will hand out our award the galloping gobbler in just a moment as Aaron Rodgers the front runner for MVP across the league takes us to break. The Galloping Gobbler. This was the mold. Some loved it. Some, not so much. It's been through some changes. Can I hold it? Remember two years ago when I threw for 370 yards and three touchdowns, you guys didn't give me the gobbler? Aaron Rodgers throws for 307 yards, his seventh 300 yard game of the season. Time to simplify the game, brought to you by Windows 7, and they can simplify drives. How about a 65 yard completion for a touchdown to James Jones? One of two touchdown passes on the day for Aaron Rodgers, who now has 33 on the season. We will present the Galloping Gobbler on the other side of the break. We may have good news for old number 12. And welcome to the AT&T postgame show on Fox on this Thanksgiving. 27-15 win for the pack down to the field. Here's Pam. Wow. Here we go. 11-0, man. Are you kidding me? Just tell me how this feels at this point just to keep it keep it rolling. It feels great you know we've uh, been through a lot of different types of games uh, blowouts tight games uh, adversity games like today uh, struggle in the first half but uh, our defense kept us in it and we finally got things rolling in the third quarter. Uh, it feels great that they're a good football team and uh, we just gave ourselves a little uh, little cushion there in the division. I know you think we've been unfair to you but here it is the 2011 galloping gobbler it's all yours it, it take it away lot, yeah it looks a lot better than the, uh, the last model. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Come true. Yeah, thank you. Aaron Troy Thanks Aikman here congratulations I know that was a much coveted award you can put it right alongside your Super Bowl MVP trophy. Yeah. Hey tell me about in the first half you guys came out you struggled unlike anybody has seen this year and yet you were able to get it going in the second half what was happening in the first half and what were the changes made that allowed you to come out and do what you did in the second half. Well, I think uh, in the first half we tried to do uh, our no huddle and uh, keep them in, in our zebra personnel, and we just weren't converting on third downs like we wanted to. Uh, second half we got under center a little bit more, uh, started running some regular offense, and uh, just kind of got things going. We had a good beat on uh, what they're going to do uh, there in the third quarter, and James ran a nice post route and uh, didn't underthrow him too bad, and he ran it for a touchdown. I kind of got us going. I don't know you to be so serious, man. Lighten up. What are you going to do this weekend? You got time I'm off. I'm going to relax. I'm going to relax. So I just want to say happy Thanksgiving to my mom and dad, my family, my grandma, all my relatives getting together today. I love you guys. Are you going to watch Vandy this weekend? Are they playing For this sure. weekend? This is a big game this weekend. They got to get to a bowl. They got to be Wake Forest. So. Your little brother, Jordan, right? Yep. 
Jordan Rogers, quarterback of Vanderbilt. Give up that award because we know it's heavy. Troy can no, barely no, no. lift got, it. No, I'm holding on this for a while. Okay. It's a special right here. Thanks it's for special. making us feel so good here at Fox. You bet. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. All right. Uh, Aaron Rodgers yeah. of the undefeated Green Bay Packers. They are now officially 11 and 0. Get them away from there unharmed. Wrap them in bubble tape for the off weekend. The guys coming up with more on the AT&T postgame show. They're waiting as we continue from Detroit.